All right, Shay. Let's talk about the big news of the day. Eli Ricks are reportedly entering the transfer portal after a season, after two seasons at LSU. Obviously, uh, comes over from IMG Academy, a uh, five-star guy, someone who we anticipated being a huge, huge player for this team coming into the season, and he was for six games, and then obviously gets hurt and elects to have season-ending surgery, and that's where we, everyone was like, okay, this is not great, but you know, it is surgery. It happens and, and the injuries continue to stack up, but it wasn't, we weren't sure about whether, the, what this meant. And now we get some clarity, obviously with the whole Ed Orgeron situation, I believe Ed Orgeron was fired after he elected to have surgery. Um, one way or another, you can correct me, but now he enters the transfer portal. Uh, just what are your initial thoughts and takeaways from that? Well, I think it's a, well, you saw the board reaction, Matty B. Uh, a lot of these people, obviously, who, who are listening to the pod have followed Eli Ricks since high school. He was at Modern Day, he transferred to IMG. Uh, and then when he committed to LSU, it was sort of this whole like in limbo thing. And a lot of people thought he was going to flip to Ohio State. Uh, he comes, he plays that 2020 season a year ago. I think he led the country in picks. I know he led the SEC in picks. I don't, he might have been like second or third in the country, uh, but had a really good freshman year. And even then, I think he only played in eight of the 10 games, and yeah. then you had six this year. So 14 total games isn't exactly what you want out of your five-star, right? Like that was your five-star signee after Stingley that was supposed to be this one-two punch. And and obviously on both sides, it, it didn't sort of end the way you wanted it because both of them ended up being hurt this year. And then now Eli Ricks transferring his money years next year, Matty B. It's, yep. He'll be a junior. Everyone sort of thought, okay, He's all, I mean, look, even last off season, um, when he had just had a really good freshman year, there were rumblings that he was about to enter the portal and go to Ohio State to the point where his parents had to come and say, like, out and they were quoted in the public as saying, look, he's not doing anything. He's locked in. We saw him obviously come back and play his sophomore year. But I guess it's not like a big surprise considering those things, right? Like that, there were always these little hurdles along the way that you had heard he might enter the portal, but we never knew for sure. And, and I, in fact, for me, it caught me by surprise that he would do it now when you're a week out from finding out who the new head coach is. And just because you plan to enter the portal, I don't even think he's officially in there yet as the time we're recording this, but uh, even if you plan to enter it or enter it, you can always take your name out and come back. And obviously maybe if Corey Raymond stays, that makes him feel more comfortable. I don't know how things will play out there. If you're making me guess about where could he go, I've mentioned the Buckeyes have always been in the mix for him. USC is going through a coaching change, but that was sort of one of the teams that was in the mix because it was a hometown team for him. Bama needs corners badly next year. So, I mean, there's there's yeah. plenty of options with really high-profile programs that I, I don't think Eli Ricks is going somewhere lower than LSU. You know, I think you would want to be at a, another school that's contending, especially in his money years. So, we'll see. I, I don't – you know, this is one that's been sort of unpredictable to the point where it won't surprise me if he just came back to LSU. It won't surprise me if he transfers to – another school without much more fanfare to it. So we'll track it. Um, but the only surprising thing here to me was the timing that he would, the kind of one of the marquee guys on the team would leave maybe five days before you find out who a new head coach is. So that yeah. was curious in a, in a way, but again, we'll see how it unfolds. Yeah. I, I think the, the hope from obviously Scott Woodward and a lot of the, the administration is that players kind of hold on just for a second to kind of give it, give the coaching search a second to name the coach and then figure it out and then go from there to where players can at least react. And we saw Ortron say that Mickey Joseph, who's the wide receivers coach, associate head coach, recruiting coordinator, he said he took all freshmen off, um, which, you know, they've got a really talented freshman class uh, for a meal this past week, or you know, I don't know if he said when, but he said recently. And that it was that message, right, Matty B, that it was reassure him hey y'all just have patience don't do anything right now finish out the season you know stick together y'all are the young core of this team and then see what the new coaching staff looks like um so you like hearing that if you're an LSU fan because obviously as many woes as you've had with the roster and total numbers this freshman class they put together during a pandemic where they weren't even able to go out and eval these guys like they had met these some of these signees for the first time when they moved in this summer, that was the first time they'd ever seen them face to face. So a really nice freshman class. We're seeing the fruits of that this season. You want that to be in place for the next head coach. So it's, it's good that they've sort of got that message drilled home to them. 
Yeah, and from Orgeron's perspective, it helps that he's not, I mean, if we take him by his word, that he's not looking to coach somewhere else next year. Um, right. That does help to where he's like, all right, I'm from Louisiana. This has my, been my dream job. Um, I, th- I do think he's enjoyed every every day of it, good or bad, and he's not going to coach somewhere next year. So now he's just like, all right, let's just let's just keep doing what we're doing. You know, that he's been known as a recruiter his entire career. Just keep recruiting, just keep doing what he's been doing. And it's not only recruiting for the next class, but it's also recruiting these freshmen to stay, these sophomores to stay as well. Because like you said, the freshman class is great, but the hell, the sophomore class is really good too. That's been really impactful. So, you know, he's done his job, but at the end of the day, these kids are going to look for what's best for them. And I think a lot of them will give the new coach a chance maybe, or they'll at least see who, see who it is and be like, okay, this is interesting. Who do they keep from the current staff who, who leaves? But I mean, we, we could talk about it. It's, I, I, this, I don't think it's going to be a massive, massive change because a lot of kids, at least from what I've seen from coaching turnover, give the new coach a chance. Like, uh, we say with Kim Mulkey, right? Obviously, that's a different kind of situation, but a lot of those players stayed, right? Kim Mulkey only added one player from Baylor. Of uh, a lot of players will give the new coach staff a chance and then use that one trans one time transfer after the first year. So that's what I'm kind of thinking, but I do think we'll see uh, a few more transfers in, in the coming weeks. And we saw it with Jay Johnson, right? And yep. <clears throat> and maybe this will be a good point to drop home what my point was going to be about the transfer portal. And and it's always a worry, right? It's a concern. If you're losing a five-star into the portal, then yes, it's a concern. It's a hurdle for you. I'm with you, though, that it's not – I don't think it's going to be some widespread thing because I think that a lot of these guys are going to wait around. And as I mentioned, Jay Johnson, LSU's baseball coach at Woodward, hired from Arizona, the current players on the roster, which were a lot of t- – I mean, they've got a couple of the most talented freshmen in the country from last year's team. Uh, that were coming back. They've got recruits coming in, all of that. All those guys kind of pretty much stayed put and said, we're going to give them a chance. And now they, you know, not only have, have seemingly grown to love them, but he brought with him a bunch of really, you know, some talented transfers, whether that was him, whether that was, you know, different staff hires he made who were able to bring in the transfer to from where they were. And I think that's one thing that you'll have to remember here. If you're worrying about Eli Ricks, and worrying about the transfer portal, the transfer portal giveth and taketh uh, and it's the, the yin and yang of it that is, if you're really good at it, and if you're really good at working the portal, is what kind of makes it a wash or, or makes you still come out on top. And what I mean by that, maybe more so than ever, right, is that now the NCAA has got it in place where you can take transfers and they're not counting against that 25. The transfers, if Miles Brennan stays in the portal or, you know, um, uh, Coy Moore or, um, you know, Eli Ricks, guys like this, for every guy you have leave, you can now replace him. And it doesn't count against your 25 initial counters, your, your scholarship signees, which uh, are obviously largely high school signees. Yeah. Now you can focus on high school as much as you want, some JUCO, whatever it might be. But then you can count up to seven guys. For every one guy that leaves up to seven, you can replace them. I'm not saying you're going to go get another Eli Ricks, but you might get a guy or two that can at least give you depth there. You might get a starter at another position that you feel brings real value and maybe beyond just one more year, like Ricks has one more year. Maybe you get someone who's got a couple more years in them. So uh, I think that will be something to really monitor once, not just the new head coach is named, but also when these assistants are all named, because certainly with LSU's roster numbers being low, with them really having needs at a lot of positions that you can put in, as you noted, the freshman and sophomore classes are very good. So you put those guys all in place. Then you start saying, okay, what is my new signing class done for me? Then where do I need to fill in the holes? And you can start filling them in. Like I said, up to seven guys. That's a lot of guys you could go after in the transfer portal. And if you've got a coach who's coming, not only is he just going to explore the whole portal, but he's going to have guys on his team. I guarantee it that will say, at least think about it. Do I want to use my one-time transfer now? Because my, A, my coach is leaving. B, he's going to LSU. And there's only so many schools out there that players are at where they would say, I don't need to go to LSU. I'm already at. Bama, Georgia, you know, whomever it is, uh, you know, not everyone's fitting into that group. So it'll be an intriguing storyline for me. That's like the next wave of storylines after the head coaching stuff. That's that's pretty much going to be all December, right? Because, I mean, you have the you have early signing day, which we have to see the, a this new staff keep the class together, which we assume that they've done Ordron and company have done a good job of for the most part. But still, obviously, it's hit or miss at times. You don't know what's going to change to that point. But then it's the transfer portal and who they're going to add on 
Because I think those additions will come relatively quickly, right? Those will be the ones that we see, like you said, if it's whoever from a decently big school. I don't want to throw a random name out there. You were uh, about to do Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams. I, I was, I was not. You just, ah, uh, ah, uh, man, I can't even, I can't even speculate anymore. Um, okay. If it's a random school, like I don't know, um, and they bring over another guy, it'll happen really quickly. So that's that's going to be the interesting point, like you said, to see how that kind of evolves <clears> over <throat> the coming weeks. Um. But I mean, like I said, the, the especially a couple like I mean, receiver, uh, running back, Garrett Nussmeyer, quarterback. I mean, I feel really good about the freshman sophomore classes. It's just about who they keep from those classes. I mean, defensive line, I feel pretty good about. I'm going through. It. I feel pretty good about every position except maybe like corner and offensive line, and like maybe linebacker as well, since Clark and Baskerville are probably gone. Right. Yeah, you have to think those seniors will be gone. Linebacker, I think, will be a huge position because. If you don't have Clark and Baskerville, and Mike Jones has really found a home in this like three, four, almost our yeah. you know, outside linebacker type role, you're talking true middle backers. We haven't seen Josh White. You know, we haven't seen Antoine Sampa. You've now moved Mike Jones outside. It's just not a lot of guys that you would then go to and say, oh, yeah, no doubt. Like Greg Kinn has played a little bit, but then you would yeah. presume like it's like the only guy you can name now that would be like immediately starting. The only guy who's actually played some. So. Uh, it'll be interesting. Obviously, Josh White should be healthy, and maybe <clears throat> him and Greg Penn will be the starting linebackers, but I would have to no doubt think that – and we heard it. When Orgeron was the coach midseason, when we would talk about the portal, he would say O-line and linebacker and, and at times safety, but he would say those are sort of the groups we really got to focus on. I think that holds true for the next uh, 